Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a particular end board that we can make against the voiceless voice that turns out to be quite nice. So this is an end board that plays around Super Poly and also plays through Droll uh, regardless of whether or not they have it or plays through Droll because we can end on a board that's still more or less the same thing. And this is a board for going second, or well not going second, sorry, game two or three going first. Uh, so this end board is going to require a mannequin cat. It's also going to require a couple of other things to have a, a couple of interruptions. So it can play through, uh, depending on what you open, right? It can play through a couple of hand traps. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it. So I'm actually on this screen because I'm going to showcase what we're going to side out as well. So this is what I think is pretty good to side out against them. Uh, so shifter going first and so poly going first. They're both like kind of mid. Uh, and then I want to actually side in a seventh card as well, which is going to be Christia because it turns out Christia is actually pretty good. Uh, that was my notification, guys. Please ignore that. And we're going to take out one more card. Uh, let's take out, I think, either an Imperm or maybe like a Fenrir is probably correct. But we'll just take out an Imperm uh, just in case. I'm going to swap those out. So we're going to actually do quick two quick combos. It's the worst time for someone to message me. Uh, we could potentially... Let's do like a starter combo and a nimble beaver combo. So either one of those will require one other monster. So the nimble beaver combo require one sprite monster because you already use a normal summon up. And then the sprite will just require um, any, the sprite starter combo will require any uh, normal summon at all. So actually Fenrir will also solve the problem for both of them of needing one more card. Uh, but obviously, let's say a hand like this, right? You just have full combo, push it up. Um, so let's do what I said. So let's go ahead and obviously Fenrir is just like another body if you really needed it. Um, let's go ahead and put these put these back. For the first one, let's say we open one sprite and a nimble beaver. So beaver and blue like this. So during the main phase, we'll go normal summon beaver, beaver effect. And there's a bit of lag, please ignore that. Special the angler. Um, in case you run into some monster running uh, ghost ogre, we'll go for blue here always before we go gigantic because it's before the fifth summon anyways. Uh, we'll search the jet here. You might get drawed here sometimes, it's whatever, right? Um, so we'll go overlay. Let's assume that we didn't get drawed. And let's assume that they don't enter up us here. So we'll go gigantic effect. I now always detach Beaver just because um, if I do have to go through the Herald of Pure Light line, I'd rather add back the Beaver than the Angler. And let's say the gigantic resolves. We will summon out the Caddy here. And then what we're going to do, because we're locked into twos, is summon the jet. Good jet effect. And jet is always going to search startup because we have to respect evenly. People are starting to use it again. And then from here, you just want to uh, link summon the sprint. And then we'll go sprint effect. Dumping the angler. To go into two beavers. Where is my? There it is. And we're going to overlay here into a mannequin cat. Okay, so typically I believe how many cards was that? That was us starting with a nimble beaver, so one card, and then um, there was a sprite blue as well, so two cards, and then we also started with anti-spell because sometimes you'll draw it, right? So that's three cards. You should have two other cards. It could be hand traps, could be like another starter, could be smashes, whatever. It could be more sprite monsters, could be a, like a red or a carrot. Um, but typically I wouldn't activate this just yet. I'll only use this during the battle phase just to play around with poly because sprint plus uh, carrot is obviously like a gorilla. And we're just going to set two cards here. Keep in mind the anti-spell kind of cooks them really well. Look at our end board here. So we have a fire, a light, a dark, and an earth. Um, this is going to become an Omni. This is our um, Summon Christia card. Sprint is going to be a disruption in itself because it's a bounce. 
and then during their turn, let's say they go draw phase, stand by main, during the draw phase they're going to activate anti-spell, typically cooks them quite quick, uh, quite easily, if they cosmic it, it's unfortunate, um, but that's perfectly fine, and then let's say they somehow, let's say either you don't draw anti-spell or um, you get your anti-spell cosmic which means in the main phase they can then go into all their spells, they can special summon whatever, right? So let's say they activate the ritual spell, uh, tributing off the low, so low goes to the graveyard and then they have Skull Guardian in hand so they summon it because low is, a, is the only uh, tribute requirement for that card. They'll go to Skull Guardian, probably will be uh, chain link 2 and then low will be chain link 1, so Skull Guardian search um, low to special summon itself, and then we will just go caddy chain link three, and then uh, mannequin cat can be chain link four. Or actually, it's the other way around. Uh, if you want to do it the other way around to protect the mannequin cat, that's perfectly fine as well. So we'll go mannequin cat chain link three, target the skull guardian because of course you can't target it un uh, until low hits the field, and then caddy is going to trigger to bounce. So we'll go chain link four, bouncing the caddy. Searching Penny. You can also search uh, Nimble Beaver, of course. But yeah, then we'll go Mannequin Cat to summon. We'll summon the Christia. And then Chain Link 2 was the, uh, the Skull Guardian. So Skull Guardian will then search. And then Chain Link 1 is Low. So Low will then activate, attempt to summon itself. Can't summon because of Christia, and then you can in a new chain activate Sprint, detach, target the Skull Guardian to bounce to hand, and then that basically locks them into not special summoning. Sometimes they'll normal summon first, which means that Caddy can activate first. Because keep in mind, after you summon Christia, you can't summon Penny either. You can't summon the Herald, right? Um, so keep that in mind. But if they normal summon first, let's say they want to out the anti spell. I've had this happen in two games so far against someone at my locals where the, he normal summoned the Diviner of the Herald. Um, I triggered the caddy to bounce and search and I was expecting him to send the Trias but instead he sent the um, Elder Entity Entus just to pop the Fragrance which makes sense because they can't play under it. And then uh, that triggered my caddy, I got my Penny, I got a special summon my Herald which gave me an Omni Negate and then when he tried to special summon again he could trigger Mannequin Cat targeting whatever he summoned and then um, Christia would come onto the field. There is an off chance that they might summon like normal summon low and then they get uh, Skull Guardian first onto the field. So in that instance you'll probably want to trigger the starter early to try and bounce the low or something like that. Um, but yeah it gets a little bit rough because then you're locked into two so just keep that in mind. Um, see if you, there's a way you can, uh, oh right, no, okay, actually, if if you have a caddy on field already and they summon a low and you want to bounce it, you can just search a penny, uh, special the Herald of the Arclight, and then uh, special summon it, activate sprint to bounce, and then bounce back there low so that you can still target their monsters and they won't get the only gate when the skull guarding comes out. Yeah. Um, and of course, you st should still have two other cards here. Now let's uh, reset the deck and let's go with a sprite starter plus any normal summon line. Alright, speaking of which, we have a pretty nice opening hand. Let's say we're going to use these two, right? So very similar in terms of the line. We'll go draw phase, activate starter to summon. Go blue effect. So let's check. And while we're here, actually no, I'll do it in order so no one gets confused. Move to main one, special the jet. Better effect. So again, if you get drawed here, it's all good because we won't really need it. Like we don't need to search anymore. Then we'll go into gigantic sprite. Gigantic effect. into caddy and then we can normal summon the ash it could be any normal summon monster keep in mind it, if it's a sprite monster that searches you or whatever even better if it's Hyperia, right draw one even better 
but any monster there link off into two and of course the sprite starter is just for carrot so you have protection during the battle phase if they want to even the you always let them go into the battle phase make them waste it at the start of a battle phase activate your starter to some carrot just in case they're bluffing um like if they're not bluffing obviously you have protection if they are bluffing whatever they still use the battle phase up we'll go sprint here Dumping the angler. We'll go angler effect, summon two. And then the same line here where we get out the mannequin cat. So how many cards was that? That was one starter and any normal summons. That's two cards. You should have four cards left in hand. And this is again your end board where you have an omni to get off this, you have a bounce of sprint, and you have a mannequin cat into a um Christia, as well as a starter that you can use to trigger your sprint or you can use it for protection. Just keep in mind that uh, starter will lock you into twos, which means you can't summon the Herald of this. Um, so you got to do it in an order that is appropriate for your match. Um, that is just about everything. I feel like this is a really solid end board. If you have anti spell in your hand, even better. If you have hand traps to stop them, right? Like any of that stuff, um, it's quite a winnable matchup just make sure you play correctly and yeah i might get around to doing more side deck um like siding options against other decks uh eventually so keep in i guess keep an eye out for that if you enjoy the video please like and subscribe leave me feedback i'll read everything as always um take care and i'll see you next time bye